Hello, listeners. Jordan here. I just want to let you know that you can listen to Nighttime early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Include it with Prime. You are listening to the Nighttime Podcast. Hello, listeners, and welcome to the Nighttime Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Bonaparte, and tonight I'm going to take on something a little different than we normally do around here. There's a story unfolding just a few blocks from my house, and it's nearly all I can think about, and all anyone in my city of Halifax is discussing. I'm going to warn you straight off the jump here, this is a story that's as delicate as it is horrific, and one in which facts are coming to light in real time. As I do my best to share this breaking news, I'm going to be taking you along with me through some disturbing and emotionally charged territory. And knowing that, I'm going to do my best to present the facts as well as the public discourse surrounding this story responsibly and respectfully. So let's just begin here. Tonight, in this episode of Nighttime, we're going to be discussing the death that recently occurred at the Mumford Walmart in Halifax, Nova Scotia. It's really sad for us, for all all our community. And I just want to give message for all of us. There should be, you know, kind of safety procedures we should follow. I mean, you have heard, like, it was brutal. As we move through the story tonight, I'm going to be making references to online posts made across a variety of social media platforms. In this modern world, I suppose that's how breaking stories are shared anyway. So with that said, many people first learned some type of incident was occurring at the Central Halifax Walmart as a result of a post made to a popular community page on Reddit. This poster starts the now raging public discussion with just a few simple words. Does anyone know what's going on at Walmart on Mumford Road? I heard that there's been some incident between 9 and 10 p.m. Initially, commenters described seeing a large police and fire department response outside of the main entrance. But that's not necessarily unusual for this particular Walmart, as it has a bit of a reputation. In fact, regular listeners of Nighttime would have heard this Walmart's reputation referenced in a recent episode of my Encounters with Creeps series. Hi Jordan, hi Madeline. This is Skye from Halifax, and I have a creep story to share. And it's a Mumford Walmart creep story. So, Jordan, if you know, you know. Oh, I know. (laughs) (laughs) And so, like, is this the Walmart that even if you live closest to it, you will go out of your way to go to a different Walmart? Some people would, yeah. That listener and I are far from the only people to suggest that this Walmart has a special type of chaos that spreads around it. Why it's that way? Well, there could be a few reasons. I saw a discussion on the Nighttime Podcast's Facebook page where someone questioned my use of the word unhinged to describe this Walmart. Another Facebooker named Cassandra clarified my point by saying, This Walmart is a special kind of crazy. It seems there's always a police cruiser out front. It's built next to a bus station, and it's surrounded by apartments and public housing. Also, it's built into a dingy subterranean bunker. And they're not wrong about that. This Walmart is built under a grocery store. Leaving the store is a also pedestrian death trap. You have to choose between dodging buses in one of the city's poorest designed intersections or you can take the three flights of concrete stairs that smell like urine and murder. Now, as grim as all that sounds, I think Cassandra actually sums it up quite well. But if everyone chiming in is to be believed, it seems it may be more than just the external factors that affect this Walmart. Another Facebooker had this to say. I used to service this Walmart for a merchandising company. It is by far the worst Walmart I've ever serviced. Things like fire exits being blocked by products. The management seems awful, and the staff always looks stressed out to the max. So regardless of all that, a post online suggested there was a police and fire presence outside the building, and that was far from surprising. Very quickly, word spreads that the store was just suddenly closed due to a workplace emergency was possibly an injured employee. Again, sadly, the idea of a workplace injury at this particular Walmart wasn't completely surprising. At present, this place is going through a major renovation with large portions of the store being walled off and with many departments being relocated overnight. Large pallets of goods are being shuffled around the aisles day and night, and as a result, it's certainly a precarious time in the world of workplace safety. One of the early answers to the question about what's going on there was someone suggesting there was an active shooter. This turned out to be completely untrue. 
I suppose spreading something like that was some random troll's version of fun on the internet on a Saturday night. But still, the idea of an active shooter is probably more believable than the next explanation for the emergency response that was going to begin to spread. The explanation that would soon begin to take hold is so horrific that now, days later, I'm still struggling to believe it. I can't tell exactly who posted it first or where it was first posted, but well, people began to peek out of the internet's woodwork to share statements to the effect of an employee got stuck in an oven and was basically cooked to death. When I first heard the suggestion that something this horrific could have happened at my neighborhood Walmart, my first thought was that it was simply too terrible to possibly be true. But when multiple people were saying it in different corners of the internet, albeit in slightly different ways, I began to think, did this actually happen? And if so, how could this actually happen? And I guess that's where my fact-finding journey started. Like many others around the world, I've been following this story very closely and analyzing every development, rumor, and piece of speculation that came my way. This episode is going to be my way to share everything I've learned with you. Typically, I bring co-hosts or guests along for nighttime episodes, but this one's going to be different. I want to carefully choose my words as this story is being pulled in some bizarre and certainly problematic directions by people who seem to have no idea what may have happened. And that said, we don't yet know what did happen, but we do know a lot. So I'm going to stick to the facts, and any speculation I bring into this episode is going to be done in the context of weighing it against the known facts. So let's keep the discussion moving forward. And we're going to do that by going back to the online discussion. It starts with people asking what was happening at Walmart. Stories begin to surface about an employee injury or death. And a few competing versions of what happened emerged, many involving an employee somehow being trapped in what's being referred to as a walk-in oven. But it's not going to take long for some stories to surface from people who were actually in the store at the time. One online commenter that caught my attention shared their experiences in the store just as first responders arrived and up to the store being closed. Here's what they had to say. I got there at the same time as the first fire truck and ambulance. Walmart was still letting people in, and I still went inside since I only needed a couple of items. But shortly after, an announcement came over the intercom stating that the store was closing and everyone to head to the exit. The message repeated this several times. I was in the food section and it felt quiet and normal. Then they began ushering everyone towards the front of the store. One gentleman said to me, there's an emergency, we need everyone out. However, the announcer on the intercom didn't mention an emergency, it was simply repeating, we are closed now, please exit. It wasn't until we reached the cash registers that employees told us we can't check out and had to leave our purchases on the ground and leave. Once I got outside, there were several police vehicles there and I could hear more arriving. I stayed in my car for a while afterward and saw all the employees exit the store and stand outside. They were lined up against the front wall of the store. After about 20 minutes, I left as it didn't seem like much was happening. Now, another commenter who described being in the store as it got shut down had a different vantage point. They were in an area much closer to where the store's bakery oven would be located. What they described provides some credence to the early rumor that someone was perhaps trapped in an oven. Here's what they said. I was there after the fire truck and a few cop cars arrived. They let people in without any problem. I'd assumed there was a bomb threat or something. Now I'm realizing I was probably 30 feet away from where someone passed away in such a horrific way. I was in the electronics department and there were a fair amount of stressed out looking paramedics pacing in front of the back hallway. Now, when you listen to that, that witness account on its surface may seem like it doesn't say all that much. But the way this store is laid out, the electronics section is adjacent to a hallway that branches off the main body of the store. This hallway would lead to public bathrooms and a security area, but also to an employees only area. And that's where they would do things like prepare the baked goods that the store sells. So yeah, where this person says they saw the stressed out paramedics would be just outside of where the store's large oven would be located. But now, as these stories start surfacing and the rumor mills, tentacles begin to spread out further, the only official statement we have is a Facebook post made on, on a page managed by that particular Halifax Walmart stating that the store is closed until further notice. Shortly after, a short press release came from the Halifax Regional Police confirming that they are on the scene of a sudden death at Walmart at Mumford Road and that they request people stay away from the area. 
Here's how the story was shared by the local news on Sunday, the morning after the incident. Halifax police were called to the Walmart off Mumford Road just before midnight yesterday to investigate a sudden death of an employee. In a statement, the company says that they are heartbroken and their thoughts are with the family at this time. They say they are supporting their associates with access to 24-7 virtual care and in-person support, including grief counseling. The Department of Labor, Skills and Immigration says it is aware of the situation and will continue to engage with police. The store will remain closed until further notice and officers are asking the public to avoid the area with their investigation ongoing. Now, I want to contrast that news report with more of what was being shared online. In this story, like many others, I find it interesting how the truth, mixed with nonsense, spreads so much faster online, whereas the media stumbles behind, sometimes by a day or more. At this point, I've shared some statements made by people who were in the store as customers. But as news of the store's indefinite closure spreads, some people claiming to be employees, or at least close to employees, begin revealing more information about what happened. Here's an early statement that was made online that, if to be believed, corroborated the rumors concerning a death related to someone being trapped in an oven. Their statement went something like this. Because the rumor is already going around, yes, an employee got stuck in the oven and wasn't able to push the door open from the inside and died. I hope the ones who rushed to help her and her family gets all the support and help they need. My mom works there, and from what I was told, the whole thing was terrifying. The ones who heard screams went running down to help, but no one could have expected that. Now, I should be clear that the statements I'm highlighting here are just a small sample of many. Some are much more salacious and often start with, I heard from a friend of a friend that, and then they go on to describe some unimaginably horrific scene. But I'm going to leave most of that out, mainly because I want to stick as close as possible to first-hand accounts. But suffice it to say, there are some horrible stories that are going around. Now, regardless, come Sunday, the day after the closure, I and most other people following this situation were convinced and confident that the workplace fatality in some way related to a commercial oven, even if it was officially being referred to as a sudden death of an employee. But here's where the dark side of the internet begins to influence the story. The discourse that was unfolding online was mainly about this being a workplace accident resulting in death. But slowly it evolved. Many people couldn't believe that someone could end up dying in an oven in Walmart. One comment I found that highlights the early speculation simply says, it makes no sense why someone was inside an oven unless they were shoved in there by someone else. A response to that comment said, yes, everyone in the store should be given a lie detector test. This had to be murder. So hearing that, you can probably imagine the direction this was going. Admittedly, I was surprised to hear that Walmart even baked their own bread in the store, let alone had a large enough oven to fit a person. But I thought before we start calling this a murder, let's figure out a few things about this oven so our speculation can at least have some basis in reality. My fact-finding journey on commercial ovens begins here. Let's take a short break, and when we get back, I'll tell you everything I learned about using, cleaning, and maintaining Baxter's commercial rack ovens. Welcome back. This next segment is gonna focus a lot on Walmart's ovens. To get started, let me just tell you upfront, many Walmarts do in fact have in-store bakery departments that do bake breads and pastries. I didn't know that, I was surprised. Typically in the larger super center type Walmarts, the bakery has its own section and a sort of pseudo storefront type counter where the ovens and mixers would be visible to the customers. But at the Halifax Walmart, where this incident takes place, it's a bit different. The baked goods are just sold on shelves in the middle of the store, and the actual oven is in an inaccessible employees-only area at the back of the store, not far from the electronics department, as I discussed earlier. But before I tell you more about the oven, I'm going to share another comment made online by someone who claims to have first-hand experience with the oven in question. Pay close attention to their description, as it's really going to be the jumping-off point for us here. Here's what they have to say. I've activated this oven so many times on night shift. The oven is a large stainless steel rack oven that goes from the ceiling to floor. When you are standing at it, there is a control panel on the left-hand side and a large glass door on the right that opens to the oven. To use it, the baker pushes a large rack on wheels, which holds multi-layers of items inside. The rack wheels into the oven, with hardly any wiggle room. It's a snug fit. People are calling it a walk-in oven which isn't right. 
You don't pull the rack in and walk out of it. You just open the door, push the rack in, close door, and use the exterior control panel to turn it on. It's super simple. But there is no inside release on the oven, as it's not a walk-in oven. There is absolutely no reason to ever be inside of it, as even any cleaning could be done safely standing at the doorway. It's crazy to think someone managed to be inside and have it be activated. This makes no sense to me. It's almost as if someone come in behind and turned it on, and I can't think of one good reason why a human being would be inside of it. So let's take that statement as our starting point for learning more about the oven and how an accidental death could occur. I've done some research on the rack ovens used by Walmart and found that a common model is the Baxter OV500. I've seen this exact oven in several other Walmart bakeries, and it matches the description provided by that online commenter we just heard from. And that all considered, I do believe the Baxter OV500 is the oven used at the Walmart in question. Many people discussing this case have referred to the oven as a walk-in, and like that commenter just said, that's not accurate. The correct term would be a rotating rack oven. You load a stainless steel rack up with sheets of bread and cookies or whatever you want to bake, you wheel the rack into the oven by pushing it, and then you close the door, just in the same fashion you would slide a baking tray into your oven at home. So that sounds safe enough, but here's where I found a problem with that comment or statements. They mentioned that there's no internal release and there's no reason a human being would be inside of it. Both of these points I can disprove pretty easily. I have a copy here of the usage and maintenance manual for the Baxter OV500 rack oven, and yes, there is a reason to be inside of it, yes, it's large enough to fit a human, and yes, there are safety features designed to prevent a human from being locked in it. So let's start with the one reason I have for someone to go in the oven, and that's to clean it. Looking at the manufacturer's operating manual, it's suggested that the stainless steel exterior of the oven be cleaned daily with a damp cloth, and that weekly, the interior of the oven be cleaned with warm soapy water, rinsed with clean water, and thoroughly dried. Remember that this incident occurred just around 9pm on a Saturday night. I've never worked in a Walmart bakery, but it would make sense to me that a weekly cleaning routine be scheduled for an evening on the weekend when you're probably not using the oven as much. Now again, let's back up to that statement we just listened to. The commenter suggested it could be cleaned by simply opening the door and putting your arm in it, and not actually stepping in. And I thought this statement to be false. There are two versions of the oven, one with a door that's about three feet wide, and one with a door that's just under four feet wide. Either would allow a person to comfortably pass through. And as far as the actual interior surface to be cleaned, even on the smaller of the two ovens, the rear wall is about three feet deep from the front door, and from top to bottom, it's about seven feet tall. I did some tests myself using a hall closet in my home that had similar dimensions, and I, a grown man, would find it near impossible to wipe down something greasy and grimy with these dimensions just by sticking my arm in. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say people often step in or at least put a foot and their upper body in to clean the interior surface, especially if they want to thoroughly clean it. Now to foreshadow a bit, at this point we haven't considered details of the victim of this incident, but let's just say for now, if a 19 year old female was tasked with cleaning the oven, they'd probably have a more difficult time reaching the corners than I, a grown man, would. But let's go a bit further here. The commenter suggested there isn't an internal release on the oven as there's no reason to be inside it. This again is provably false. When inside the oven, there's a way to open the door, and it's an obvious one. There's a metal knob, basically a stainless steel miniature version of what you'd find on a bedroom door. But that said, an oven isn't a bedroom, and this knob needs regular maintenance and inspection, given its hot, greasy, and oily environment. Just as the manufacturer of this oven suggests a weekly cleaning of its interior, it also suggests a bi-monthly preventative maintenance schedule to follow. I'll read directly from the user manual, which explains why. The OV500 rack oven must be kept on a regular preventative maintenance schedule. The failure to have the oven properly maintained by following the recommended preventative maintenance procedures may result in higher repair costs, shortened equipment life, or unsafe operating conditions. It's the owner's responsibility to make sure preventative maintenance is followed. This will ensure continued safe and reliable operation. Now, when I look at the bi-monthly maintenance procedure, I notice that yes, bi-monthly, the interior door release should be tested. So with all of that said, 
Weekly, the interior of the oven should be cleaned. Yes, someone could easily fit inside. And yes, it's possibly, if not probable, that the person cleaning it wouldn't be able to do so without stepping inside or at least leaning the majority of their body weight into it. Yes, the manufacturer designed the oven in a way to account for someone needing to open a closed door from the inside. And yes, the manufacturer is aware that the interior release knob could fail and as such incorporated maintenance and inspection of the knob in their bi-monthly maintenance procedures. Now, I can prove a lot of that stuff, but explaining how the door could end up shut or the oven could be turned on, it's a little bit harder, but there are ways it could happen. So it could be something simple as someone inside the oven cleaning pulls the door shut to clean the interior surface of the door, not realizing that it locks shut. Now, how could a user be locked inside and unable to get out? Well, it could be a failure of the interior release. It could be a medical episode. Now, explaining how the oven could be turned on, that's a bit more difficult. We'll get into that a bit later, but it seems the manufacturer does account for it because when I look at the cleaning instructions from the manual, it instructs users to disconnect the power and allow the oven to fully cool before cleaning it. We'll get back to this topic, but I wanna provide an example of something similar happening, but with less tragic results at this exact Walmart. An online commenter shared this story. I worked at the Mumford Walmart years ago when they converted to a super center, and one time an employee got locked in a big walk-in freezer. He pressed the emergency alarm to alert someone he was stuck, and the manager on duty had no idea what the alarm even was. Thankfully, they found him before he froze to death. Some of the managers at the store are absolute idiots and don't take safety seriously enough. So I don't think I need to spend much more time on what could have happened or what may have happened. At this point, I just wanted to spell the myth that this would be impossible. And the reason I wanted to do so directly is because there are many people who use the assumed impossibility of someone ending up in that oven as the basis for theories related to this being a homicide. Now, I want to move forward and watch along as additional details of this incident leak online, and then shortly after be confirmed publicly. Remember, up until now, it's only confirmed to be a sudden death of an employee, and the oven is all just rumor and speculation online at this point. But that's about to change. Like many other major stories, details emerge unofficially long before police press releases so the mainstream media catches up. And that's the case here in the death at Walmart. As rumors swirl online about this sudden death, audio recordings of emergency dispatchers surface online. Now think of it this way. If someone calls 911, they describe their emergency to the call taker, who then separately contacts emergency services such as police, ambulance, and fire. The 911 calls themselves are closely guarded and they're kept private. But the dispatch calls, that's different, they're public. When some keen-eyed people looked into the recordings of dispatchers from Saturday, October 19th, just after 9 p.m., they hear this. Dispatch to Station 5, 5 engine for a technical rescue call from Mumford, at Wal uh, Mumford Road, Walmart, 6990 Mumford Road. Female has locked in an oven in the bakery. Oven is on. Unsure if the staff are able to turn it off. Dispatch to Station 5, 5 engine for technical rescue, 6990 Mumford Road, Walmart, the bakery. Time to page 2122. Call will be on Ops 4, Ops 4. So when that dispatch call gets discovered and spread online, it all but confirms the horrific stories that had been being shared online for the past several days. The sudden death... Yeah, it was an employee. They were trapped in the oven, and the oven was on. It's simply unimaginable for the employee and for everyone else involved. But sadly, the story is going to get worse. But before we get to that, let's let the mainstream media catch up with this online leak of the dispatch call. Almost a day after the dispatch call was made public online, the police released a press release confirming the same details that it included. And the media, who are often criticized as being stenographers for the police, report on the fact that the police revealed new information, not mentioning the dispatch call that everyone's talking about. At that point, we're almost caught up to present day, but very shortly, the victim of this event's religious community will share much more detail about what happened. And, well, I guess you could say it's even worse than you ever could have imagined. We're going to get to that after this short break. Welcome back. Now, up to this point, I've dragged you through a slowly unpeeling story, and hopefully I gave you enough information about the oven and its usage to at least give us a foundation to imagine this tragedy laid on top of it. But things are going to start moving a lot faster now. 
When local news articles with headlines like Walmart employee found dead in oven start appearing, the world notices. And when the world starts to talk about it, they don't always do their research. Almost overnight, between Tuesday the 22nd and Wednesday the 23rd, near-endless YouTube videos and TikTok videos are published that describe the event in blatantly inaccurate detail. And I expect a lot of this was done intentionally as a way to bait engagement. Words like murder, rape, mercy killing, blood everywhere start to go around. Remember that earlier report we heard at the top of the episode where a man describes being there when the store was evacuated and seeing the employees lined up outside? I've seen that account work its way into many of the theories and be presented as proof that there was some sort of police interrogation and lineup, almost like a scene out of a movie where it's like, one of you did this. And it gets worse than that. I've also seen endless videos that claim to be footage of the victim's screams echoing through the store. If you ever come across them, these videos are fake. It's just random audio, I think from the TV show American Horror Story, being played over footage of random people shopping at a Walmart that isn't the one in question. Keep in mind that this is the Walmart near my house. I go there far too often, and I can recognize it. It's actually shocking to me how people from all over the world have used this tragedy for some quick, easy engagement on their social media accounts. But I think all that is partially made possible by the slow pace of official information being released. The vacuum that exists there is easily filled by bad actors, and that's sad. But with that all said, we were recently provided the closest thing of an official account of what happened in the way of a fundraiser seeking to cover the victim's family's costs. The 19-year-old victim in this case is Sikh, and the Maritime Sikh Society has served as a sort of spokesperson for the family in media appearances in the days since the workplace death. On the 23rd of October, the Maritime Sikh Society launched a GoFundMe campaign, and, well, their description of what happened is gruesome. I suspect it's intentional that they're not hiding the brutal and horrific way their community member died, or the brutal and horrific way other employees, one of which turned out to be the victim's mother, found her. The fundraiser, which I'll link to in this episode's description, intends to raise $50,000. At the time of this recording, it's already tripled its goal. But the description of the fundraiser, it pulls no punches. I'm going to read it in its entirety. Gersimran Carr was only 19 years old, a young, beautiful girl who came to Canada with big dreams. On October 19th, that fateful Saturday night, she was found burned to death in the oven at a Walmart bakery on Mumford Road in Halifax. Gersimran and her mother both worked at Walmart for the last two years. In that evening, like any watchful mother who breathes for her child's happiness, Gersimran's mother tried to locate her after not seeing her for an hour. She asked around, but everyone brushed it aside, thinking she must just be somewhere helping a customer. Walmart's a superstore, after all. And her phone, as well, was unreachable. Her mother started panicking, as it was unusual for her daughter to switch her phone off during the day. She reached out to the on-site administration for help. As you all know by now, her charred remains were found inside an oven in the bakery after a few hours. Imagine the horror that her mother experienced when someone pointed out leakage coming from it. Police are investigating the case, so we can't share any more details at this time. Both Gersimran's father and brother are in India, and we are trying to get them here as soon as possible. The family's sufferings are unimaginable and indescribable. They need your support to get through this horrific time. Please donate to help this family in this difficult time. The entirety of the funds will directly benefit the bereaved family. The details shared here are provided and consented to by the family. So considering everything we heard, it's reasonable to think that this 19-year-old employee, fairly new to Canada, was tasked with cleaning a large commercial oven and somehow became locked inside seemingly for hours as the oven was on. And it was her mother and some other young co-workers who found her. It's a tragedy of unimaginable proportions, almost too cruel to even be possible. But here we are. Now at this point in the story, we're at the present day. The store at this point remains closed, with many unmarked vehicles parked outside, its windows covered, and security personnel guarding the front doors. A makeshift memorial of flowers and cards is slowly growing at the base of a lamppost directly outside the store, and a constant stream of curious onlookers, co-workers, and community members hold vigil near the candles that surround it. 
In fact, it was just last night I was there, standing by as a group of the victim's friends and co-workers held a short and solemn memorial for her. One of the young women who were in attendance, who looked just like a kid to me, was one of the people that found her friend and co-worker dead in an oven as her mother stood by helplessly. To say she was devastated would be an understatement. Now, I'm going to start wrapping up this episode, but I need to end with the big questions. How did an employee end up in the oven with the oven turned on? It's a big question. Really, I can only think of three possibilities. The first one is that somebody made this happen, a homicide or a prank gone wrong. But I've seen no evidence to support this possibility. And of all the various theories related to foul play that I've seen online, not one of them had any evidence to support it. Now, the second way someone could end up in this oven would be if they intentionally did it, which seems incredibly unlikely, but it is a possibility that someone could could choose to end their life that way. And again, like the first theory related to foul play, I don't see any evidence of this. I just have to say it as it is a possibility. The third way, and the one which my mind sees as the most likely explanation, is that this is a freak accident with dire consequences. But even that explanation is tough to explain. As you've heard, we can explain why someone would be in the oven, we can imagine a way the door would end up shut, and we can imagine a scenario in which the internal release is defective or dysfunctional. That in itself would be a freak occurrence. The oven turning on would be a separate freak occurrence happening after the initial freak occurrence that ends up with someone trapped in there. The best explanation I can come up with is that before cleaning the interior of the oven, the exterior was wiped down, including the control panel, and in the process, some sort of cooking function on the oven was enabled. And then when the door clicked shut, the oven started its process. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying that's what I think happened. This is just me simply trying to understand a scenario in which this could happen, and I'm doing that out loud. Now, I expect it's gonna be some time before the results of the current investigation are shared with the public. But this investigation is going to be thorough, and I'm sure of that. Nova Scotia has some of the harshest and most powerful workplace safety laws. Our province's history is in mining, fishing, forestry, and steelworking, all dangerous industries. And as a result, many Nova Scotians have died earning a paycheck. As a result, Nova Scotia's Occupational Health and Safety Act holds employees accountable for the safety of their staff. I can only imagine the work that's being done right now behind the scenes to explore how usage of the oven was trained, how the oven was maintained, how staff were supervised, and ultimately how this could happen. Not only are there serious legal repercussions for Walmart, there is also, perhaps possibly even more critical, major risk to brand reputation. Walmart doesn't want the world hearing about their employee who is burned alive in their oven. That makes me wonder if the GoFundMe, which was authorized by the family, is so graphically written because they want the world to know that this wasn't a sudden death of an employee. My heart breaks for everyone involved in this, but most of all for the victim and their family. To die at 19 years old while working too hard for not enough pay is cruel. And then when the full account of what actually happened comes out, I expect this to have been preventable. Now, as far as Walmart, at this time, it's still closed indefinitely, and I can't imagine the store reopening before at least Halloween. The front end of the store is still racks of skulls and gravestones that only last week when I was there were in the process of being marked down to be sold off before Halloween made them obsolete. If there's anything Walmart can do, it's get every drop of money out of their products and keep prices down, right? Well, they say there's a high cost to Walmart's low prices. That makes me wonder all the things they do to save money. I expect the investigation into Gersom Rankar's death may provide some examples of the ways Walmart saves money. I want to thank you for joining me for this episode of Nighttime. I understand that this is a different format than you're used to, but I wanted to get all this off my chest. For anyone who wants to support the family's GoFundMe, I've added links to it in this episode's description. Additionally, I'd be interested in continuing my coverage of this horrific event. If anyone would like to speak with me, employees, witnesses, friends, family, I'd be happy to speak with you. You can reach me at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. Now, with all that said, I'm going to start wrapping up this episode. But before we part, 
I want to give some thanks. First, a big thanks to Monty Data, who contributes the music for this episode, LJ from the Dystopian Simulation Podcast, who provides my intro and outro voiceovers, and then lastly, but most importantly, a massive thank you to everyone who listens to Nighttime, as without your interest and your support, this show would be as pointless as it would be impossible. And on the topic of support, let me thank the newest subscribers to the premium feed. Megan, Sam, and Tara, we appreciate you. And for anyone else who'd like to support the show, you can help in a variety of ways. First of all, a premium feed subscription costs just a couple dollars a month, and that money funds the creation of new episodes. But the premium feed will also give you those episodes two days early, give them to you ad-free, and give you access to a full back catalog of episodes. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can go premium at nighttimepodcast.com slash subscribe. And even if you don't want to go premium, you can still support the show by simply sharing this episode on social media and letting all your like-minded friends know why they should listen. If anyone out there has any story ideas, wants to give feedback on the show, or would like to submit a question or comment to be aired in an upcoming episode, you can do all that and more at nighttimepodcast.com. I look forward to hearing from you. But until then, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, and let me know if you see anything weird. The Nighttime Podcast is written, hosted, and produced by Jordan Bonaparte. Candles flicker at this growing makeshift memorial outside the Walmart at the center of this unimaginable tragedy, where a 19-year-old employee was found dead Saturday inside a store bakery's oven. It's a nightmare. Like, I feel sorry for the family, the co-workers. It's very shocking. It's very sad. She's been identified by members of the Sikh community here as Gorsimran Kaur. She recently came to Canada with her mother from the UK. Balder Singh from the Maritime Sikh Society spoke with Gorsimran's mother and says he's now working to bring her father to Canada too. Uh, if her husband comes here, that will be a really good thing for the family. The Walmart was still open Saturday when a 911 call was made around 9.20 p.m. The Sikh Society says Kaur's mother also works at the store and had been frantically looking for her daughter. Gaur Simran apparently hadn't been seen for several hours, and ultimately it was her mother who made the terrible discovery. When she noticed that uh, her phone is not responding, after a while she found her body in that oven, and that's a really Said. Just how could this have happened? Police have only confirmed the young woman was in a walk-in bakery oven, the kind often used in large grocery and retail stores. Police are calling this a very complex investigation and are also warning members of the public not to share speculation on social media. Just be patient with our investigation and let us do our job. The story now making headlines around the world and on social media. Fundraising for the family has surpassed its goal in less than 24 hours. Walmart says employees are receiving psychological support and those who'd been scheduled to work are getting paid while the store remains closed. Saying, like many learning about this terrible story, doesn't know how Core's mother will ever recover.